Welcome to Trap Towns, the show where I take you to some of the best towns across America for trout fishing. Each episode, we'll travel to a new town to fish two specific trout streams, from freestone to limestone to tailwater and everything in between. We'll also highlight some of the great American history as well as architecture illustrated by the towns which we visit. All that and more today on Trout Towns. On this episode of Trout Towns, we're in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, your gateway to some of Cumberland Valley's most storied limestone spring creeks. Our first stop on this trip will be to Latorte Springs Run, one of the most historically significant limestoners in the eastern United States, famous for its contributions to American fly fishing. We'll then explore another one of South Central PA's finest limestoners, and that's Big Spring Creek. With its pastoral charm and stream-bred wild trout populations, this large-sized limestone spring creek should definitely be on your radar. While in town, we'll explore Carlisle's rich historical past, with significant contributions to the Revolutionary War, Civil War, as well as the modern American military, this agricultural and commercial community is steeped in American history. We'll also highlight some of Carlisle's historically significant architecture, namely its residential, commercial, religious, and public architecture primarily from the 18th and 19th centuries, with styles including late Victorian and federal. So, please join me today as we fish, explore, and embrace our very next trout town in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Carlisle, Pennsylvania is the county seat of Cumberland County, located in the highly productive agricultural region known as the Cumberland Valley. French-born fur trader James Latorte may have built a cabin in the area as early as the 1720s. Latorte Springs Run derives its name from this early pioneer. The official settlement of Carlisle was designated by the Pennsylvania Assembly and the Penn family in 1751. During the French and Indian War, which was the North American theater of the Seven Years' War between England and France, the largely successful Forbes expedition was organized in Carlisle. The settlement of Carlisle was largely supportive of the Patriot cause during the American Revolution, including lawyer James Wilson, who was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, in addition to being one of the framers of the U.S. Constitution. During the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794, the troops from Pennsylvania and New Jersey assembled in Carlisle under the leadership of President George Washington. While in Carlisle, President Washington even stopped to worship at the First Presbyterian Church at the corner of Hanover Street and High Street. James Buchanan, the 15th President of the United States and the only one to hail from Pennsylvania, graduated from Dickinson in 1809. In 1834, Dickinson Law School was founded and today is the fifth oldest law school in the United States and the oldest law school in Pennsylvania. During the Civil War, a Confederate army attacked and shelled Carlisle as an offshoot of the Gettysburg Campaign. A cannonball dent can still be seen on one of the columns at the historic county courthouse. In the 20th century, Carlisle and Cumberland County more broadly saw economic growth, with businesses rising in crystals, rubber manufacturing, and heavy metal casting. Also, the U.S. Army War College came to the barracks in 1951 and has provided training for military leadership ever since. During the first half of the 20th century, the Carlisle Historic District was the hub of all agricultural activity located in the region west of the Susquehanna River. Now, with that brief history lesson completed, let's get back to fishing. Latour Springs Run, a nine mile long limestone spring creek tributary to the Conodiguinic Creek in Cumberland County, PA, cutting through the heart of Carlisle. Limestone spring creeks generally are fed by springs flowing from limestone formations underground. Therefore, water temperatures are cooler in the summer and moderated in the winter. The increased alkalinity of the water is great for aquatic insects and excessive aquatic vegetation. Classic limestone spring creeks, like the Latour, derive most of their volume from the headwater springs. These areas are relatively flat and meadowy, with a marshy bank and silty, difficult to wade stream bottom. The Latorte has a 1.7 mile fly fishing only stretch just outside of Carlisle, made famous by fly fishing authors Charlie Fox and Vincent Mariano. Significant developments in fly fishing techniques were developed on this stream in the 1950s and 1960s. With no trout stocking and a population of wild, naturally reproducing brown trout, come to this stream with reasonable expectations. From gin clear water, a meandering current, thick aquatic vegetation, and selective brownies, this is one of the most difficult streams to fish in Pennsylvania. So let's give it the old college try. So just 10 minutes outside of the downtown historic core of Carlisle, we're now on Latorte Springs Run. We're in a lower section of the Latorte, probably about a mile from where it dumps into the Conna de Gwinnett. 
As you can see, although it is normally a very flat, glassy body of water, right here we have some nice riffles coming in. I do have my eight foot six fly rod. We're gonna just throw out dries. Way too much aquatic vegetation. This time of year, uh, I would get stuck if I tried to nymph. So we're gonna start chucking out um, some midges, maybe some BWOs, uh, maybe some other stuff later. We're gonna fish this stretch for just a little bit, right up by the riffles, and then we're gonna go to another spot. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's start fishing and see what happens. So we're starting out, I think with a size, I wanna say 20, 22, very small, black midge with a little parachute on top, very small. And we're just gonna kinda see what happens. Uh, I always come to the Latorte with very low expectations, although there are uh, a pretty good population of wild browns in here. Uh, it's just very, very difficult to fish. Just got one. Hit the, switch to a BWO. So we hit the BWO. Doesn't feel small, doesn't feel big either. Kind of in the middle. See if we can get them over here. Well, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good, dude. If we can land them, that's pretty good. Probably about 10, 10, 11 inches, not bad, maybe nine. Oh, got him. All right, so let's get the hook at him, take a freaking look at him, awesome. All right, so although they do get much bigger, we got a pretty healthy, uh, probably about 10, 11 inch Latorte Springs run, wild brown. We will absolutely take it because of how difficult this stream is to fish. Let's take a look at this guy. Nice fish, nice fish, man. No crazy colors on this, but it is all wild fish out here. No, no stocking whatsoever. Let's get them right out of here. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. All right, so after fishing this ripple section for just maybe 15 minutes, we got on our first wild brown. Quite surprised we got on one uh, so early on. I pretty much fished out pretty much fished out these riffles. So I think we're probably gonna make a move here soon to another section. I am gonna fish maybe another five, 10 minutes and then we're gonna get out of here. All right, so we're just getting out here to another section of the Latorte. Again, we are in the lower stretches and we're hoping as night slowly descends that there will be a little bit of a sulfur hatch and we can get some, even just a couple wild browns, Kingfisher just flew by. That, that has to be good luck, right? Anyways, hopefully we can get some of these wild browns on sulfurs. So let's get out here and see what happens. Got him. Just got what I think is a nice little wild brown. Probably a teeny tiner. Got him. All right, so we got a solid four or five inch, a little wild brown right here on the Torch Springs run. That's, that's great, that's great. Let's get the hook at him and take a look at him. All right, so we got a beautiful little wild brown trout. Caught him on the sulfur dry fly, which is uh, wonderful. Take a quick look at him, beautiful fish. All stream bred, natural reproduction. No stocking in the Latour for quite some time. So that's great. We. Uh, we had one and lost him just a little bit ago and just got that guy, so let's keep fishing. So as you can see, the water looks like a sheet of glass right now. There's a few fish rising, but not many. I'm thinking in the next 15 minutes, it's approaching eight o'clock, this area is gonna start to boil a little bit. I mean, not really boil, but there will definitely be some fish rising. I had on a sulfur, but I'm noticing it's all black midges. So I actually switched to, go, go figure, a black midge. So we're gonna work our way up through this section very slowly. I've been standing in the water for like 10 minutes, just sort of waiting for action to uh, commence. So as soon as it does, we'll see what happens.
Just a little guy. Just a little guy. All right, we got him. Just got a good fish. Just got a good fish. Sorry about the lighting, it's getting really dark. Hit the sulfur, if we can land him. He's uh, putting up quite a fight. And by good, he's probably like 10 inches, but for me here, that's, that's great. Oh, there he is. Still can't tell how big he is. Oh, he's putting up a fight, man. See if we can get him in the net. Hold on, bud, hold on. Oh, oh. Got him. Hoo, 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 hoo. All right, so dude, we just got a solid, probably 12 or 13 inch wild brown here on the La Torch Springs run, super dark. Apologize about the video quality, but that's that's great. So let's get the hook at him, take a look at him. So again, the lighting quality is very poor, but we just got an absolute bruiser of a wild brown here on the La Torch. I know they get bigger, but for me, this is such a wonderful fish. So we're gonna get him, we're gonna get him right out of here. All right, so with night upon us, we just released that gorgeous, probably 12, 13 inch, really healthy looking wild brown trout. Got him on the sulfur. Uh, and I think that's all we got from La Torch Springs Run. After a half day fly fishing for elusive and weary wild brown trout on La Torch Springs Run, there's nothing better than heading to downtown Carlisle for a few hours to sample the local architecture on foot, not to mention the excellent food and drink offerings. As we begin our architectural walking tour through the downtown Carlisle Historic District, let me briefly share some interesting, at least to me, information on what you'll be seeing. A majority of the buildings in downtown Carlisle are from the mid to late 19th century, with a few dating back to the 18th century. Architectural styles are varied, including late Victorian, Queen Anne, Colonial Revival, Art Deco, Late Gothic, Romanesque Revival, Classical Revival, and Italian 8, just to name a few. Carlisle proudly highlights a significantly intact collection of well-preserved architecture representing public, religious, commercial, and residential properties. Of special note are the Cumberland County Courthouse, St. John's Episcopal Church, Cumberland County Prison, First Presbyterian Church, the Carlisle Theater, as well as Dickinson Law School, with many other superlative buildings to see along the way. Having provided that brief explanation, please indulge me for just a few minutes as we take an architectural walking tour through historic Carlisle, just minutes away from La Torch Springs Run. And I promise, we'll get back to fishing right after this.
Creek, a nationally renowned limestone spring creek that flows through woodland and farmland for six miles before emptying into the Conodaguinic Creek. Big Spring is even the fifth largest spring in all of Pennsylvania. Made famous in the 1930s with anglers traveling via train from as far away as Philadelphia, Washington DC, and New York City, all to fish Big Spring's large native brook trout population. After historical mismanagement, pollution, and other environmental factors, Big Spring Creek has made a significant rebound and now contains a naturally reproducing population of wild rainbow trout, which is somewhat rare in Pennsylvania, also native brook trout, and even the occasional extra-large wild brown trout. With incredibly clear water, significant aquatic vegetation, a fairly constant water temperature year-round, and an abundance of aquatic insect life for the fish to eat, this stream can be challenging but incredibly rewarding. Let's see what we can do. All right, so maybe 20, 25 minutes outside of downtown historic Carlisle, we are on one of my favorite true limestone spring creeks, and that is Big Spring Creek. So. It's about, uh, I don't know, 9.15 a.m., quite cool, probably in the high 50s, low 60s, nice and sunny. Um, I do have my eight foot six, four weight fly rod, lots of leader and tippet. Uh, this is, although not quite as difficult as uh, La Torte, quite a, quite a challenging stream. Um, this morning, we're gonna be throwing out some, probably some black midges. It's not very cloudy, so no BWOs. And I also have some crickets and grasshoppers and beetles. I'm probably not going to nymph too much just because it's, you know, as you can see, there's a lot of aquatic vegetation. I always end up getting snagged. If we could pick off just a handful of, you know, wild rainbows, maybe some brookies, uh, I think that'd be a wonderful morning. So we're going to start pushing up. We are in the fly fishing only section. I'm slowly going to start working my way down, uh, downstream, you know, parking area to parking area. And we're just going to see what happens. So let me get out here, start flinging out this uh, really teeny tiny, maybe size 20, 22 black midge. And we'll uh, see what happens. So let's get after it. All right, so just got my first hit on the midge. Feels like a, not a big fish, maybe a medium sizer, but we'll take it. Maybe five or six inches if I saw it correctly. Nice wild bow. Let's hopefully get him in the net here. Hold on, bud, hold on. Wild rainbows are very uncommon in Pennsylvania. Obviously down in the Smokies or out west, they're super common. Here in Pennsylvania, there's maybe a dozen, maybe two dozen max streams that have wild naturally reproducing uh, rainbow trout populations. And this just so happens to be one of them. So uh, that's awesome, probably about a four inch Wild rainbow, let's get the hook at them. Take a look at them. All right, so by no means a bruiser, and they do get much bigger. I've actually caught like 18, 20 inch wild rainbows on this stream. Probably not gonna get any of those today, but nice, thick, healthy, Pennsylvania stream bred wild rainbow trout. So let's get them right out of here. Really nice. See you later, bud. See you later. Ooh, just had one, son of a, son of a gun. Missed him. Just had one. <laughs> Just had another one. Son of a son of a gun. Two in a row. These are very small midges, so it is easy to miss them. But that sucks. That really sucks for me. All right, so we missed two that were good medium size, uh, probably wild rainbows. Did just get a little teeny tiner, little teeny tiner. Probably not even gonna net them, very small, for about two, three inches. As always, we love seeing the different age classes, very healthy stream. Let's uh, get the hook out of this guy and get him right out of here. Again, hit the little black midge. Just a little guy, number two, teeny tiner. Beautiful colors though, if you see the colors on this guy, get out of here. All right, so two fish, both relatively small, but again, at least for right now, as it is approaching late morning, we are still getting bites. 
on the black zebra midge and that that is something that's not nothing so we're going to stick with it as long as we can so one thing i love about uh big spring creek uh which is in stark contrast to the latorte uh big spring has retained much of its you know pastoral kind of agricultural character surrounding this stretch um, outside of newville which is a small kind of historic town that it uh, flows through before it joins the kind of gwinnett um much of the upper reaches is all you know beautiful old farmhouses i can literally smell manure you know there's cows around there's presumably corn and other things being grown it's really nice back here um there's a road that parallels the stream but uh very much um you know sort of retaining its pastoral agricultural roots and i you know we really appreciate that on on this you know on this show praying really that this great blue heron right there oh no 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 go farther go farther oh i'm hoping he doesn't go exactly where i'm going because that's that's not what you want at all that's not what you want so we just got one. Oh, there he is. There he is. Let's see what we got here. Oh, got him. All right, so we just got a wild rainbow. Let's uh, get the hook at him and take a look at him. All right, so we just got a little beautiful stream bred wild rainbow, probably about four inches, nothing crazy. Definitely on the smaller side. Hit the black midge. That's great. Let's take a look at this guy. Really beautiful colors. Let's get him right out of here. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. Alright, so we just got another one here. Another small, presumably rainbow, but that's okay, we'll take it. Doesn't feel too bad. Doesn't feel too bad. Let's try to get him in the net over here. Yeah, another small guy, but we'll take it. Oh! Got him. Alright, so let's get the hook out of him, take a look at him. Alright, so again, hitting the black midge, a little white parachute uh, dry fly, probably a good five, five inch. Wild rainbow trout, real nice. Beautiful colors, let's get them right out of here. Beautiful fish. See you later, bud. See you later. Woo! All right, so fast forward a couple days. Uh, last time we were here on Big Spring, we managed to catch four small rainbows on dries. Today, I'm doing something I normally don't do insofar as I'm bringing two rods, one rigged up uh, with dries, one rigged up with, uh, I don't really have any streamers. I'm not much of a streamer fisherman yet. I wanna learn how to become a better streamer fisherman. But anyways, I have on a olive colored, large size woolly bugger, hopefully mimicking somewhat a uh, sculpin. Not really, but that's like the closest thing I have. So we're gonna methodically fish this upper stretch of Big Spring Creek, the fly fishing only section. And my plan is I'm gonna dry fly fish each little set of riffles, deeper water. Um, and once I either do or do not catch any fish, uh, we will transition to throwing out um, the woolly bugger maybe i'll switch to some smaller nymphs who knows all right so for the first time all morning i finally got a bite on my little bwo uh obviously didn't land him right i'm casting but that is what you want so that's exciting for me personally so we're gonna keep slinging out this oh got him got him got him not bad it's probably about six inch yeah probably about six inch well Bo, we'll take it we will totally take it if i can land him here probably the biggest one so far in big spring not huge oh all right so we we got him probably about five five and a half inches uh maybe six that's a that's a size i'm familiar with so let's um let's get the hook out of him take a look at him all right so by no means a bruiser <laughs> by no means a bruiser uh, this is the best one we've caught uh, today and last time we were here. Uh, probably about five, six inches. Very thick and healthy. These fish are 
not thin. They are gorging themselves on all the aquatic insects. Hit the BWO, very feisty. We love vigor here on this channel, so that's okay. Beautiful little fish. Like I said, probably about five and a half, six inches. Real nice, beautiful colors. Let's get them right out of here. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. All right, so we just got up to the famous ditch area, which is right over there. I did go past another fisherman with a little dog, interesting. Um, and he said he caught some in here. It looked like he was nymphing, so I assume he nymphed this really good water that I was similarly going to nymph right up around here. There's like a little dam, some nice riffles. So not even gonna try that, even though that was the plan, but that's okay. I did see what I thought were fish rising under this bridge. So I'm gonna try to drift this little BWO under the bridge, see what happens. We'll check out the ditch. I never catch fish there, it's too difficult, but we'll check it out. And then I think we're gonna head back downstream, maybe fish a little bit outside of the fly fishing only area and just see what happens. So let's uh, drift a couple dries under here, see what happens and go from there. All right, so first drift under the bridge. What do you know? We got a fish. Not sure what it is yet. We shall see. Not big, but he's getting stuck on these. Uh... Oh, that might be a brookie. Oh, nope. That's a little teeny tiny wild rainbow. Uh, we will take it, though. Uh, so let's get the hook at him and take a look at him. All right, so our first drift through or underneath the bridge got this really beautiful, beautiful little wild rainbow. Let's get him right out of here. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. All right, so we left the fly fishing only section of Big Spring Creek behind. We're actually down in the quaint, really nice little town of Newville at the, I think the historic Laughlin Mill. We're gonna cast out for maybe just five minutes. This should be where all the wild browns are. Uh, yeah, we're gonna cast out maybe five, 10 minutes, see what happens. And then we're gonna call it a day on Big Spring Creek. Alright, so we just got a what feels like a pretty decent wild brown trout right here at the Laughlin Mill. Let's quick take a look at him here. Hopefully we can get him over here. He's fighting pretty good. Oh, yeah, probably maybe 10, 11 inches. Nothing crazy, but the nicest fish here so far. Let's see if we can get him over here. Got him. Alright, so we just got a solid probably 10, 11 inch wild brown. So let's get the hook at him and take a look at him. Alright, so although the upper reaches of Big Spring Creek are well known for the wild rainbows and naturally reproducing brook trout down here in the lower stretches uh i think it's pretty much all browns um so let's take a look at this guy nicest fish so far in big spring probably about 10 11 inches really solid fish he is uh really trying to get out of this net let's take a good look at him oh beautiful fish beautiful fish let's get him right out of here got another one just got another one doesn't feel as big but we'll we'll certainly take it we will certainly take it all hitting the BWO small size BWO so that's that's wonderful haven't seen him yet feels probably about five six inches seven inches maybe nothing crazy another brown we'll take it though we will certainly take it all right let's take a look at this guy we're not even gonna net him. Not even gonna net him, wet my hands. Hands are absolutely sopping wet. If you guys saw my hands right now, so wet. All right, so beautiful little five, six inch wild brown. Let's get him out of here. All right, so with Big Spring Creek and the beautiful Laughlin Mill right in front of us, let's quick wrap up for the day. So over the course of two days, we managed to catch eight, uh, mostly wild rainbows, couple of wild browns right here at the end on Big Spring Creek. Really love this stream. Definitely my favorite true limestone spring creek in South Central Pennsylvania. Um, had a great time, but that's all we got from this stream. From all of us here at Trout Town, and by all of us, I sadly just mean myself, we'd like to thank you for watching today's episode. If you have any other Trout Towns you'd like me to visit, please drop me a comment in the comment section of this video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see me visit other Trout Towns across this great country, please consider subscribing to the Traveling Trout Co. channel to give my life meaning. Also, go ahead and tap that like button. Just give it a tap. Trout Town. Brought to you by Traveling Trap Co., a company that's not really a company in any meaningful or significant way. Stay traveling, folks.